guys welcome back to take dose and in this video we will look at the rotating the box problem which is from lead code number 1861 let's now look at the problem statement in this problem you are given an m by n matrix of characters box representing a side view of the box each cell of the box is one of the following either the cell is a stone or it contains a stationary obstacle or it is empty the box is rotated 90 degrees clockwise causing some of the stones to fall due to gravity each stone falls down until it lands on an obstacle another stone or the bottom of the box gravity does not affect the obstacle's position and the inertia from the box's rotation does not affect the stone's horizontal positions it is guaranteed that each stone in box rests on an obstacle another stone or the bottom of the box return an n by m matrix representing the box after the rotation and the matrix given is m by n we need to return an n by m after doing 90 degrees of clockwise rotation now let's look at an example for better understanding in this problem we are given the box of size m by n and this is the representation of the box here the stars represent immovable obstacle the obstacle which do not move irrespective of the rotation and the hash where uh, it is a movable stone so gravity will work on the hash and the cells where i have not marked those are all dots in the problem statement and that means it is empty now the gravity always pulls everything downwards we need to return the box after 90 degrees of clockwise rotation and the constraint is the gravity pulls the stone down and the second constraint a stone can rest over only a solid material and there are three solid materials in the problem the first one is another stone the second one is obstacle which is the star mark and the third one is the outer wall boundary that means this boundary you see on the outer wall is actually solid so nobody can escape this outside boundary fine now having uh, seen everything if you rotate this by 90 degrees then this will be the resultant matrix you see the m by n matrix will become an n by m matrix the number of rows will be converted to the number of columns and the number of columns will now become the number of rows and finally we need to return this result as an answer so i hope you were able to understand it now let's look at an observation and we will do the dry run along with the optimal solution let's assume that uh, we have a 4 by 5 matrix as given here now i have just numbered them in a sequence from 1 to 20 if you rotate it by 90 degrees then you see how the numbers are changing you see the green uh, row which is row number 0 1 2 3 4 5 this has become column number 3 the row number 1 has become column number 2 row number 2 has become column number 1 and the row number 3 has become column number 0 you see the rows are getting converted to column but they are not just converted to directly columns like the 0th row does not become 0th column but it is becoming the third column so the row scanning if you do top down then it is getting converted in the right to left order in the columns okay and if you want to find out that if my row number is let's say r then what will be the equivalent column number here then it will be always equals to m minus r minus 1 this will be the new column number so the new column number will be equals to whatever is the number of rows and your current row index minus 1 so if i have to find out what is the let's say the column number of this two after rotation then it will be equals to how many total rows are there four and then what is the row number 2 and minus 1 so this will give me a uh, column number 1 right why i am uh, doing this subtraction because we have to count from right hand side why i am doing this minus 1 because the number of rows is counted based on one based counting but the indexing is counted based on zero based counting so just to compensate for the uh, extra value we have to subtract one from it okay so i hope you have understood how uh, to find out given the row number which column number will it become right so rows are getting converted to column and this is the formulation to find out given a row r what will be its column number but then if you look at the columns here like let's look at the fourth column here the fourth column will become the row here right but the row is reversed if you look at the third column then this is becoming the third row but the row is reversed if you look at the second uh, column look at it 3 8 13 18 18. so this will be in the reverse order the the row number will be same as the column number but it is in the reverse order right so there will be multiple ways to actually do this 90 degrees rotation but we will be looking at let's say the most optimal and intuitive approach so what i will do is i will be iterating for all the items from left to right row wise 
once i finish a row then i will go to the next row okay now if you see a hash here then this means that it is a stone so it is movable therefore you cannot just directly write a hash here isn't it anyway you know that zeroth row will become the third column but we cannot just copy paste all the values we have to delay the positioning of these stones because if you imagine the gravity is working on the right hand side because if you rotate it by 90 degree the uh, gravity will be equivalent to as if on this matrix it is working on the right hand side it is pulling everything on the right hand side so don't you think that this stone here at 03 will come at 04 and the stone here at 00 will come at 03 it will happen right so that is why you cannot just directly print anything uh, in the resultant matrix you have to delay the printing process so what i will do is i will keep on counting the hash values that i have seen because these are movable objects right so how many hash values have we seen two hash values now if i see an obstacle immovable obstacle like a star or i see the last boundary item which is solid then i will be starting to fill all the hash in the reverse order so if i move from 00 to 01020304 i have seen two hash values so my count value will be equals to 2 okay now i know that this is row number 0 hence i will be filling column number 3 so actually this will not be the wall if you are imagining this will be the wall right so i will be filling two hash values moving bottom up and this will be how i fill it up now again i will repeat the process for the row number 1 if i go from left to right and if i keep the counter then i will see a hash and i will increase the value by 1 when i uh, see an obstacle which is immovable right the star it it is seen at this point that means it can be seen at this point right so i can fill a star here immediately and whatever is the count value i have to just move it here upside and i will be printing those many hash values okay and then again continue the process so re restart your counting from the next cell so the counter will be again reset to 0 and you see how many hash values are there so one hash value so this will be one and if you keep on going then you have hit the wall so this is that wall and once you hit the wall you move up and set the hash value here okay repeat the process for the second row as well keep moving from left to right your count value here will be count equals to 2 if you see a star then if you move equivalent cells in the column side here then you will see a star here so put a star now how many hash values have you seen two hash values so from this point onwards you move up and fill up two hash values right and after this again reset your counter to 0 and process from left to right here so there is nothing so the counter is 0 right if you go to the next row again you move from left to right at this star what is this cell if you move top down here this will be that cell right so you put a star and then the count value here will be equals to 1 so that means from this point onward you move one point and put a hash value okay and after this beyond this point again reset your counter to 0 and count how many hash values have you seen one hash value only right and you hit the wall so when you hit the wall here then from this point onwards you move up and print one hash value and we are done with all the rows therefore this is the 90 degrees rotation equivalent matrix so the main part of this problem is about finding the proper indices that means the coordinates and implementation now in this case we have just iterated the entire matrix one time and therefore the time complexity will be mn and the space complexity is mn if you assume uh, that the resultant matrix is taking extra space generally we do not take the output as extra space so it can be considered as order of one as well let's now look at the code if you are someone who is looking to prepare for top product based company within a limited time of just 3 months then we have brought for you both the dsa and the system design live interview training program The most important feature of this program is you get a filtered and condensed structured curriculum in depth discussion of all the topics and my guarantee of your understanding one on one guidance with me and live weekend classes to know more about the training you can whatsapp us on this given number in this code we are given the box and i will be finding the number of rows and number of columns we will be taking an extra space which is the resultant matrix and if uh, the box is of dimension m by n then we will be taking an n by m dimension resultant matrix and i will start filling up so in the input matrix i will go row wise one row after another so row number is i then for every row i will be keeping a counter as i said which will be counting the hash values now if i see that 
box at ij is hash then i am just incrementing the counter and if i see that i have seen a star then i will be filling the star value at that given index in the resultant matrix and from there i will move up and fill all the count number of hash values so this is that function which uh, moves from x y coordinate and keep moving up and fills the count number of hash values as i had explained and after that reset your counter to zero and move beyond the star and again start counting the hash counts okay now once you are done doing the entire row and you have hit the wall then after hitting the wall if your number of hash values seen are greater than zero then i need to fill up from this wall and to the left hand side that means you have done the rotation so if you hit the wall the bottom wall then if the count value is let's say two then i will fill two hash values moving bottom up and this will be done again by the fill function okay and finally after doing this entire operation we will be returning the result so this is the entire approach and i hope you were able to understand it this is more of implementation based rather than being an algorithm you will require a pen and paper in order to solve this problem if you still have any doubt then feel free to comment below and i'll try to help you as soon as possible support our channel by liking our video which keeps us motivated to put more and more videos for you see you guys in the next video thank you